Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're analyzing Steven Lorenzo. He murdered two gay men back in 2003, dismembering one, and he sexually assaulted and tortured many more. Now what stands out about his case is that he requested to be sentenced to death after two decades of pleading not guilty. So I thought it might be interesting for us to look at his body language to figure out why. Why would somebody that's such a monster ask to be put to death? Let's see if his body language clues us in. Last thing before we get started, just wanted to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. All right, let's go. I reoffer you uh, counsel. Uh, you are to be sentenced this morning. I believe that that is a very important part of your proceedings. So you're going to notice he has actually fairly exaggerated body language, especially for someone in court. I oftentimes point out people that show almost no body language, but he is showing a lot. He's got a lot of movement, he's listening, he's engaged. He's also representing himself, which is unusual. But part of what they're talking about now is that they have an attorney there if he changes his mind and wants representation. So I am going to offer you, as you know, you have standby counsel, Mr. Brian Gonzalez, an excellent attorney, and he is sitting right next to you. Would you like for me to appoint Mr. Gonzalez? So once again, you see him nod, you see him listening. This is all important to point out, and this is the way he is through the whole trial, because right now I'm really just showing his sentencing, but there's a lot that you can look at through the whole trial, and this is very representative of what his behavior is like. I'll to represent you today before I announce the sentence in your case. <coughs> Excuse me, no, I'm fine, thank you. All right, all right. I just wanted to make that offer. To so one thing you're noticing is this big smile. Now. This is not because he's happy he's going to be put to death or because of what he's requesting. What he's trying to do is to gain control over the courtroom. He wants to feel like he's the one that's in control of everything that's happening. And by doing that, showing the, the, this emotion with the judge, trying to make it a reciprocal relationship as though he has some control in the situation is what he's doing. He's absolutely trying to take control as best as he can. Let's keep watching. Gotcha. Are you then... Uh, representing yourself pro se, ready to proceed. Can I address the state attorney? You may. Yes. I'd like to uh, let you guys know that I have no animosity against you. You did your job and did a very good job of prosecuting this case. So I want to thank you for that because I appreciate your fairness to me. And that's what I appreciate. So one of the things his body language is doing is it's he's being persuasive. He's reaching out to people. He's leaning in towards them. He is trying to emotionally affect people. So that's one thing that we can say for sure with his body language. He's being expressive with his face. Once again, he's trying to appear genuine. As I said before, this is a manipulation. But you'll get some more subtle hints that he's being manipulative if you listen closely. In this lifetime, I'm the bad guy. You're the good guy. Maybe the next lifetime, the role will be reversed. So here he's saying, in this lifetime I'm the bad guy, you're the good guy, maybe it'll be reversed. He's trying to level the playing field. He's trying to somehow diffuse the idea that he is this horrible person who has done these horrible things, and that maybe next time I'll be in control. I get you are right now, but maybe there's a time where I will be. So it's this, hey, you did such a great job, but there's also almost an implicit threat inside of that. And this is something that we see narcissists and psychopaths do all the time. They say something that you think is almost a compliment, but it's there's something underneath it that is not. There's there's still manipulation going on. Sure, who knows? But I want to let you know that I uh, wish you all well. Okay. And to the judge, I want to thank you because you have uh, had incredible tolerance and. Once again, the judge is ultimately in all the is in control of this courtroom. He is the one that has full control, and he's trying to say. I want to compliment you on what a good job you're doing. So he's trying to assert his own control in the only way that he knows how. This is someone who has tortured and assaulted people. That is the ultimate form of control for someone like him. So he's trying to find, what way could I possibly take control back in this situation? Saying that he wants the death penalty is the only way that he can think to do that. So it's not out of the goodness of his heart. This is a manipulation, and this is a way that he can feel like he is getting the best of people by saying, well, I'm getting what I wanted anyway. Kind of like that idea of, well, you can't fire me, I quit. Same kind of idea, which is, well, this is what I wanted. And look, I ha I'm giving everybody in this room uh, acknowledgement because I am important, and being acknowledged by me is an important thing. So, Judge, you should be happy that I'm acknowledging what a good job you did. Patience and fairness to me uh, while I stumble my way through this whole process. 
And I want to appreciate that. I want you to know that. I'm asking you to give me the death sentence because that will be more comfortable for me to live out my lifetime. I know I can be on death row for about 10 or 15 years. So watch his body language. He leans forward. He talks with his hands. Once again, he's expressive. He's engaging with the judge. But think about it like this. This is someone who knows how to persuade and manipulate. Think about how many people he probably talked into things that they weren't comfortable with prior to getting arrested. This is someone, we should see this as a disgusting skill set, things that he's used to hurt people. And once again, this is someone who's an absolute control free. Sir, and you're just offering me a euthanasia that I'm looking to do willingly. So essentially, he's trying to tell the judge that he's going to give him permission should he choose to put him on death row, should he choose to give him the death penalty. Today is uh, perhaps some form of reverse psychology, no. nor do I care. I will not consider what you want in issuing my sentence. I know. So when you have somebody that actually is in control, like the judge, uh, I'm sure he hears manipulative people all day, every day. So I'm sure this is nothing new for him. It doesn't sound like he has a whole lot of patience for this, nor would it have any bearing or impact on the decision that he makes. But it's interesting that Stephen Lorenzo felt the need to say these things because it would make him feel like he was winning. All right, so I am then ready to proceed. Did you have anything else that you... Of Miss Pam Williams, from one Italian to another, ti condanno a morte. That translates to, I sentence you, Mr. Lorenzo, to death. That is the punishment that you deserve you. for these horrific crimes. So if you could hear that, he said, thank you. Judge Sabella is, is handing this down, and Stephen Lorenzo can't help but let people know that he feels like he's winning. He can't help but say, thank you. It, it, it's performative. Once again, it, it, it's not that he really wants the judge to know that he appreciates it. That it wants everyone else to know that he thinks he's winning. My reasoning is explained in a 40-page order. Thank you, Your Honor. I and appreciate it. Mr. Lorenzo, may God have mercy on your soul. My soul is fine. Thank you, sir. All right, so he had to get one last little jab in here. My soul is fine. Thank you. Let's, let's hear that again. May God have mercy on your soul. My soul is fine. Thank you, sir. So... Once again, this was all about control. We could go back and look at the whole trial. It's, his body language is very consistent. This has been the messaging from the beginning. Everything he does, everything he says is a manipulation. Everything he says is to try to maintain control over people and is to be persuasive. So I hope watching this has helped you better understand these kinds of monsters. People like him are dangerous. They're manipulative and they're effective. There are probably some folks who watch this that feel bad for him, that feel like he's doing a good thing. He is not. He is a manipulative monster. And what he's doing is just trying to regain control. It gives you a peek behind the curtain of what he was probably like before he got arrested. This is probably exactly how he has persuaded other people. You have to protect yourself against people like this. You can't let your guard down just because somebody does something that seems nice if you know them to be a monster. That's just the way these people operate. Anyway, I hope this was interesting for you guys. I've got lots more stuff coming soon. Once again, if you want more of my content, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.